Feels like a long time coming, Mason. Uh, bat, the Batman. Am I getting fired again? Yeah, that... you're out. <laughs> no. You're out and I'm in twice. Okay, great. You can have two opinions. <laughs> That's right. That are largely similar. <laughs> but I do want to talk about the box office of this. So the budget of this was $200 million. The initial estimates were it was a $100 million film. Oh, yeah, that's right. And after right. seeing it, I'm like, that cannot be true. Right. Like, surely not. But no, it is, so it's around 200 The box office for the weekend in the US is going to end up being between 120 and $130 million. That's bigger than the $110 uh, million estimation. Ooh. And internationally, it's going to make around $111 million. So it's going to very much make its money back and then some which is all the more impressive because there's a Batman movie every day. But on top sure. of that, it's very long. So you yeah. get less cinema sessions That's going true. at any one time. And uh, you get more people storming out at to the two and a half hour mark going, I demand my money back. And they're I, like, that's not our policy. It's 15 minutes. You get 15 yes, minutes. Right. <laughs> I mean, it just flew by because I enjoyed it so much, but I, would st- I still want my money back. Um, that's right. It's me, a guy who exists, <laughs> and I, I, I derive... My, all my enjoyment from the first two thirds of a movie, and then I demand my money back. It's a great scheme. You know, there's got to be somebody out there who does that. One hundred percent. If you just make a big enough fuss, they'll give you the money back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how does this compare to the openings? I wonder. I don't know if you have those figures there, but let's guess without even okay, thinking I can about it. Do that. Comparing to like previous Batman movies, let's for go, example, let's go the Dark Knight. The Dark weekend. Knight's Batman movie. All right, let's have a look at that just quickly. But while I'm while I'm punching those numbers into my regular non bat computer, I would presume it's less just because pandemic style. Yeah, so The Dark Knight uh, made $158 million in its opening weekend okay. in 2008. That's so, yes, more. Dark Knight Rises made 160. So, yeah, it, uh, so there you go. That's, I think that's just US. But it's not an insane amount less. No, I mean, it absolutely is. Not. I mean, it's tens of millions of dollars, which is an insane amount of yeah. money, but it's not like this made $11 million or something. It was also going up against Uncharted, I think you'll find. That's true. Greatest movie ever made. And Colin Farrell's other movie where he's got a robot boy or something. Oh, after... Yang. Yes. Apparently yeah. it's very good. Mm. Anyways, uh, critics seem to like it on the on the whole. 85% Rotten Tomatoes. Audiences seem to like it at mm. 90%. What do you think the story was? Oh, no. You fl- throw me for a loop. You familiar with this segment of the show? Yes. Where I ask you what the story was? Very much what so. What do you think it was? Well, I mean... It, it, I, I said, I've given you wiggle room there because it's what you think it was. Yeah, You it's don't true. have to be right. Well, I know. <laughs> I'm aware of the concept of this bit. <laughs> It's not a bit. You, you're giving me even more room now. That's right. But I'm not actually using it to think. <laughs> Why would I? It's funnier if I don't, in my opinion. Not in anybody else's opinion, but in mine. All right, so it's Batman. Yeah, everybody knows Batman. It's yep. Batman, but it's it's all early days Batman. It's two years, two years in a Batman being Batman. And he's like, geez, I love, I love, I love going around beating people up as Batman. Are you? What are you doing? I'm checking the Batman v Superman opening weekend. Did oh. you look like? Did it look like I was pretending to time? <laughs> it looks like you were being a stenographer there. Like <laughs> I'm like, has he been writing down my what I think the story was every time for years? Is he writing a book? Oh uh, yeah. Is this the new Leonard Moulton movie guide? <laughs> except it's just what I reckon the story was. Um, it's bad. Okay, so it's Batman. Yeah. And he's a couple of years in, and he's like. Geez, I love, I love, I love beating people up as Batman. It's pretty good, but I can't be everywhere. No. So that makes me sad because I told, I told my parents I beat up every crook yeah, in Gotham City, and it's, boy, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. There's, there's all sorts of crime, and there's a new guy, and he's out there, and he's, he's. Would you say a new breed of criminal? He's being a real zodiac, this guy, and he's out there, and he's, and he's there. But I'm gonna defend. Gotham City, which is the grimiest and greasiest city there is. It's so greasy. It's so greasy. Uh, it's, for for it's, reference, Batman v Superman made $166 million. That's a lot of money. Weekend, so there you go. Gotham City in this movie, it is the the world's largest industrial hot plate that's never been cleaned. Oh, you are not wrong. It's just, you know, you know, there's always a guy and he's like, well, I'm not cleaning it because that's where all the flavour is actually. All the flavours <laughs> in when you when you don't you don't actually, because you clean it and take all the flavour away and you're like, I think you're actually poisoning people, yeah. man. I don't know. And they're like, nah, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. And then it gets shut down. Exactly. Anyway, that's Gotham City in this. It's Pretty so much. It's the grimiest Gotham City we've ever seen. Well, I think. I think the idea of filming it in Scotland, it has like a... Ah, the grimiest city in the that's world. That's right. Well, we've seen like a, uh, yeah, the city of Scotland. It's it's got a very dark and gothic Scott aesthetic. City, right? Yeah, Scott City. Yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, we have seen in particular like the Burton movies. Mm. I feel like for the Nolan movies, not so much the first one, it does feel like this is Chicago. This is a big wide Chicago street. Yeah, right. Or whatever. But I think the idea of filming <laughs> signature, this. That's the signature Chicago. Big deep pizzas, big wide streets. Exactly. Uh, but the idea of filming it in a city that is kind of like literally drenched in this like 
gothic history and it's always raining and miserable. I think they may have added a little bit of grease. Oh, I, I think so, yeah, just over the whole city. They just tipped all the fryers <laughs> out in the chip shops. <laughs> and let it and run. And smeared it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What did you think of this, though? I liked it a lot. Me too. Look, a criticism that has been levelled at it and I would agree with is uh, – there's even less humour in this than in the Nolan movies. Like, this is this is the is, most humorless Batman movie yeah, there is. I, I think there is humour to be found, but it's not like, it's not jokes. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think there's moments in this which I thought were funny. When he puts his little sunglasses on. Which is, puts his little sun, that's fun. But like the bit, and it, we've seen a clip of it where he punches Jim Gordon. And then, yeah, sure. like, that's funny. And then afterwards he's like, you could have pulled your punch. And he's like, I did pull yeah. my punch. <laughs> like, is, I think there okay, are, funny. there are moments. Yeah, but I it. would say that being said... I think that works in this situation. Again, like we we always say, oh, everything sort of tends towards grim and gritty. But we do we have had hum- you know we have had humorous Batman's in the past, yeah. and I'm sure we will again in the future. But I think that the in the context of this world, I think it works because this again, this is to some degree the long Halloween Batman universe. Yeah, it is grim and very serious, and it's two years into Batman's being Batman. He's not necessarily having the greatest time of it. And also there's no Robin in this universe, spoilers. No, and the I think, you know, the the idea of Bat Batman lightens up when he has a Robin or the rest of the family around him mm. to sort of provide a counterpoint. Like they they push him more towards the light. When he's outnumbered. Exactly. And then he's and they're not there they're not in this yet. So it makes sense that it, this yeah. is the, the grimmest part of his journey, you know? And well and one of the things I liked about this version of Batman and Robert Pattinson, who or Robert Battenbat, who I thought was amazing in this, uh-huh. is that his version of Bruce Wayne like does not exist in the sense that like Christian Bale had like a fake Bruce Wayne that he mm, used, yeah, right, right, and he'd right. go out and pretend to get drunk, and he'd be like he'd have like four women on his arm, or whatever. Whereas this guy goes out in public, and it's like. What's up with this fucking guy? Right, right, like right. Like he, he doesn't know how to stand properly. He's just a, yeah, exactly. He's just <laughs> like a, he's out of the suit and he's just lost. He's just a weird trust fund kid yeah. at this point, and maybe he'll develop that persona I think he later. Will. Yeah, I think he absolutely will. But I, I liked that where he just felt like that is absolutely unnecessary, and I'm not doing it. But I think it is going to get to the point where it's like people know you have money and people know mm. you're strange. So don't you think that? Maybe people are going to make this connection. Mm. But even the idea that, like, he doesn't look like he's had a haircut or seen the sun, like mm. having that lot. I know people make fun of, like, the long emo hair, but I took it more as, like, he doesn't care. Yeah, it's right. It's just like, I'll shave my head once a year. And sure, that's, right, and that's right, my yeah. haircut. You know yeah, what I mean? right, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And this, this particular Bruce Wayne, this, rather than living in uh, Wayne Manor, yeah. sort of in. in the outs- on the outskirts of Gotham City, he lives in Wayne Tower. I thought which that was the, interesting. Which yeah. is in, right in the centre of the city. Yeah. Which is, uh, more, you know, very useful for getting on his little motorbike. It certainly is. He can get on his little motorbike. Well, what did you think about that? Because, well, okay, how about this? Do you think it was like the most real world version of Batman that we've seen? Because a lot of people have said that like it even goes a step further than the Dark Knight. Yeah, right, right, right. Where, you know, that at the time was very real world. And I would even say like... The Tim Burton one at the time was also supposed to be that because in comparison to the 60s one, it was even realer. Yeah. I think this, I, I think it is I yeah. think it I think it verges on being a real world. Like I think the Nolan one did as well, mm. but I think there's there's certain boundaries that you can't really cross, you know, in 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 the in in the way of like if you take too much away, if you're like, this is the real world, Batman couldn't really be Batman. Yeah. In the sense that like, what is he swinging around the city? Yeah, you can't, like that's just not a thing you can do. No, you know? he needs a bike. To yeah, get around. right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah like it, it. It feels, but I mean, it, it it is still you know essentially comic booky. Oh, absolutely. I and I think like the one element of it where I, where I'm like that we're not there at all is like there's and I don't think this is really a spoiler, but they have contact lenses which is like their cameras. Yes, so exactly. You can just yeah, walk around as opposed to putting a GoPro on somebody's head. Yeah, or a button camera. Uh, yeah, I yeah. I imagine they probably. I imagine they probably toyed with the idea of like give him a body cam, like yeah. a, like a police officer or whatever. But then there, there's elements in the movie where like okay, well that that wouldn't work realistically for a variety of reasons. So it has to be a a magical contact lens. Yeah, sure. Anyway, I just think they should have explained how it worked in detail, and that should have been at least magic. An hour of, oh, okay, he went to the fifth dimension. He got them from <laughs> Mister Mixer's Piddlick. Oh, okay, that's yeah. fine then. Well, uh, that also Matt Reeves has talked about. Here you go, Bruce. <laughs> Fiddle dee dee. <laughs> you, you stepped out to pee. Didn't yeah, you? oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that did, happened yeah. in the third hour. There's a revelation. I'll tell you this much I yeah. did not step out to pee, Mason, because I drank a regular amount of water. So I didn't. 
need to go to the bathroom not once, not one time. Great. I think I'm overhydrated and dying. Uh, you, you. There's a lot of explanation there, which <laughs> makes me suspect you just peed in your seat. Did you pee in your seat? None of your business or anybody's business. It's between me and the cinema, which I'm currently in a legal dispute <laughs> and with. And the three people around you <laughs> in, in nearby seats. What I thought was terrific, and this I think can also be said for the introduction of the Batmobile, the introduction of Batman himself. I loved that build up. So you've got the kind of multiple crimes happening across the city. This is mm. very early on. And then there's like, you see like a corridor of darkness mm. and you're like, he's, who, who? He's, he's here, yeah. he's somewhere, but he can't be everywhere. Yeah. So where is he? He's, love, he's loving the idea that, uh, th- this Batman is loving the idea that he has sort of cast a net of fear over the city in the criminal element and yeah. to a to a almost similar extent, just the regular populace of the city. Yeah, they do who, not like who him. Who are, are afraid that this masked man with, with electro gloves is going to beat them up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, yeah, he's loving the idea that when the bat signal comes on, people stop doing crimes because yeah. they're like, oh, maybe the patch of darkness over there, Yeah, Batman's there and he's going to stop me doing this vandalism or whatever. Is it he's going to pulp me yeah. for doing this graffiti. Is it on because... I'm only doing a simple graffito. Yeah, that's right. But, like, is it on because somebody, like, saw me doing this? Is yeah, yeah. watching me? What's happening here? Yeah, and also it's interesting that he, the the group that he picks to take mm. down or he happens to be at is the one that, like, is not afraid of him. Mm. Like, from then on they would be, though, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but I thought that was really interesting. And, again, with the Batmobile, it's introduced like a monster. You know what I mean? It, like, sure, yeah. It, like, revs up and the lights are going off on it and all those kinds of things. And I think he stalls it. Or does he just stop? That's a great question. I think it, 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 Or does he just kind of I think it was meant to be like a I think it was meant to be played as if like it's like it's a like a like, lurch. A, like a tiger on a on a leash, yeah, maybe okay, kind yeah. of thing. But aesthetically this and and I think probably also a lot of the fight stuff does play a lot like the Arkham games. Yes. I imagine that was prob like they I imagine there's a lot of a bunch of stuff in when this. They, when they when they put yeah. when they put these mo- put these movies together, I imagine there's a lot of influences that just got get put up on the wall. But Gotham as a as a yeah, horrible gothic nightmare, yeah. but also sort of Batman his his fighting techniques do seem a lot like the game. Yeah. Again, he does have those electrocutioner gloves. He does, yeah. yeah exactly. So. But he's not the only one in this movie, Mason. No, he is. He's got, oh, is he? I turned away every time anybody else, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. You don't want to know, do you? Yeah, yeah. So he's got like he's already got a relationship with uh, Jeffrey Wright's um, Commissioner Gordon. So he's already mm. walking into crime scenes and having a, a good look around and solving riddles and the like. What I liked about that a lot mm. is there there's a real tension because he's sort of yeah. you see this is in the trailers you see him sort of walk amongst the forensics guys and the beat cops and like the other detectives and stuff like that some you know at a, at a crime scene or at the the GCPD or whatever and there's a real tension there because there's a lot of them yeah and he's not like he's not that much bigger than no. anybody else but you don't know what he's going to do yeah. like you can really feel like they don't want him there and they want to just knock him down and bust him yeah. for whatever crimes they can pin him pin on him and he you see that like you feel like he knows that as well yeah, yeah. especially but, later on yeah. but they also don't know how he's going to react to anything they don't know if he's got a gun probably yeah, that's right. like what what's on the, what's on that utility belt they yeah. don't, they don't know kind of thing and i felt that was a really a really effective tension that, that that breaks sometimes. I agree. And I think also the idea that you skip all of that relationship building with Gordon is a good thing. Because, mm. you know, if you've read any of the comics, if you've seen any of the movies, they just end up working together, you know? Yeah, sure. And the fact that you don't have to explain how they got there yeah. I think is good. You, there's a lot of shorthand we already know that we yeah. don't need to cover. They're at that point where they are working together. They've had They've clearly had some success with, you know, the mob, but yeah. they don't entirely trust Gordon. Doesn't entirely trust him because he doesn't know who the guy is. Yeah, and Batman doesn't really trust anybody. Like he know he knows that Gordon is a good cop. Yeah, but uh, but beyond that, he's like, yeah. It seems I don't even know if he likes Gordon in particular. I would say he probably doesn't. But he's like, mm-hmm. this is the guy who will get me in the room. I only like this one Nirvana song that I keep listening to <laughs> over and over again. We could talk about that because I think the soundtrack is amazing, and yeah, especially if you like that one Nirvana song. Mm. But as a whole. Michael Giacchino's score is amazing, like real, and the Batman theme itself, uh, it's it's like quite triumphant. It's as well. very th- there's there's a couple of bars in it that are very um, Imperial March. Mm. It's the Darth Vader's entry music in okay, the Star sure, Wars movies, yeah, yeah. and I think that's that feels deliberate because he's meant to. Yeah. Whenever he makes an entrance, he's a big spooky man. Danger is afoot. Here's an interesting thing. Okay. All the all the titles of the Batman's score songs yeah. are. 
plays on words or puns? Well, actually, well, I saw this with uh, Oscar, who I retweeted his review. Oh, your best mate. He's best, my best, best mate. mate. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And he was saying that that's what he does. Like he just does fun little puns. Oh, on all I of see. His right, like, right. He always titles them in really interesting. So, ways. for example, uh, can't fight City Halloween. Oh, very good. Uh, it's raining vengeance. Very good. Uh, crossing the feline, moving in for the gill. There's a character named Gill. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so gill. on and so forth. Funeral and far between. Oh, very good. Uh, and etc. Highway to the anger zone. But also I think <laughs> because I guess it, they are quite silly, but yeah. also you, you don't know them in the movie. Mm. And also this, I guess, prevents spoilers. Yeah, Cause absolutely. Because if, you, if you yeah. do, because otherwise it's just like, Oh, Batman dies. Scene where Batman dies. Scene where Batman dies. You know, didn't they do that in the Star Wars once? Wasn't they it like Qui Gon thing? Qui Gon, yeah. Qui Gon died. Qui Gon died. <laughs> Sword through the neck. Yeah, it's actually the the first track is called Qui Gon dies later in the movie. <laughs> no. Track number one. Oh no. Yeah, I think also uh, in terms of influences. I mean, you're talking about Star Wars and that. I know people have talked about like it's a bit like Chinatown. It's a bit seven. It's like, like forty minutes longer than Chinatown. I checked. That might be true. It might be true. Is it true? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, like people have mentioned Zodiac, but I also think there's a lot of saw in this. There is, yeah. It's, yeah well, and, and I know that's. I know that also saw is also derivative of a bunch of stuff, and I know that like the code work and all that is very Zodiac and various Zodiac, other yeah. things. But I think I don't. I maybe maybe again it's the derivative thing, but I think maybe that's something that. If you were borrowing from or you were influenced by, you maybe wouldn't mention that you're like, there's some sore in this movie as well. Sure, right. Okay. I, but I don't think it's a bad thing either. You, you certainly wouldn't have any of your characters mention it. No. You're you like, this is like a bloody saw movie saw in here. Saw movie, everybody. Mm. Let's, let's talk about The Riddler. Let's talk about Paul Dano's The Riddler. Okay. He's always riddling about, isn't he? Mm. That's one of the main things that he's about. That's right. Um, I thought his first entrance was like, like Batman, very spooky, kind of very, like, I don't know, but also very sudden in a good way, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And and I, I think the mystery is like surrounding that and why he was doing that had a, and we'll talk about this in spoilers, but had a very kind of interesting like resolution. And it's not so much a like who done it, who be doing this. Because it's the Riddler. Because it's the Riddler. But it's more there like. There aren't so many twists, if I may, there aren't a lot of twists to be no, had I wouldn't in this say necessarily. So. Yeah. But I think it's more of a like a, like a, a, a why done it. It's, it is definitely you know I mean? a why done it. I think yeah. that's. Why Riddler done it. Yeah, this is a classic the, why Riddler done it. Why he did this. Mm. Why do you think he did it? Loves doing riddles and crimes, I yeah, guess. Yeah, that's probably a big yeah, part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And of course, Zoe Kravitz is in this as Catwoman. And I thought she was amazing also. I like really, really good Catwoman. Mm. I would love to see a spin off of something with like just her. Maybe a Catwoman. Maybe movie. a Catwoman. I've got a video where I talk about like all the sequels and stuff and things that could happen as a result of this. Apparently, like very early days discussion about Catwoman. Mm. But if they did something like that long Halloween spin off, which we talked about on BigSandwich.co when we talked mm. about the long Halloween. The long Catwoman. The long Catwoman. <laughs> like if they had her in, like, you put her in Rome. Yeah. And she's mm. doing like stuff there. You, completely different setting, you know what I mean? Completely different set of criminals mm. and good guys and whatever. James, you're forgetting the, the, the score that we know, the ones that titled Catwoman Dies? Oh, shit, yeah. The Catwoman dies right. real bad. Real bad. Real bad in a way she can't come back from because yeah. it's not that kind of universe. Yeah, she's not like a literal cat. Falls into a meat grinder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quite early on, Quite 10 early. minutes in. Uh, speaking of, we're doing Catwoman this week for Caravan and Garbage, aren't we? That's right. Boy, that's a different kind of Catwoman, real isn't it? Real different. Oh, also, uh, uh, Johnny Tatoots. Yes. John Taturo as Carmine Falcone. I Very good. I had reservations about... Him, not because he's not a great actor, but because he because he obviously is. But the Carmine Falcone from the comics, uh-huh. he just he just he just looks different. Right, he looks sure, like sure. a big kind of Brando kind of looking monster, mm. where he doesn't really have that. But it was again amazing, terrific, yeah, and and real Italian how do you probably. Feel- <laughs> That's <laughs> how do you, all I am interested how do you, in. How do you feel about Andy Serkis as uh, Alfred? Because we always get a slightly yeah. different interpretation of I, Alfred. See, I. I that that's actually one of my few complaints about this. I wish there was more of him because mm. there's a little bit of like you're not my real dad or ex- dad etc. Yeah, shut up, Alfred. Let me just check the score. Oh no, here you are, my real dad, <laughs> Michael Chicano. But then I think one of my yeah. favorite moments in this, and I think one of the real moments of humanity in this movie, mm. is between Alfred and and Batman, or Alfred and Bruce Wayne, mm. where Bruce Wayne has to come to terms with like. He seemed like he was kind of pushing him away because of what happened to his parents, and then he yeah, was yeah. like, "No, I, this is a person I I care about, and I and clearly cares about me because he's he's helping me do this stupid this thing. stupid thing, yeah." And I just wish we had more of him because I really mm. enjoyed him, and he's got a he's got a different haircut than any Alfred we've uh, seen before. Right. <laughs> yeah. He's probably younger than 
It's probably one of the like probably the youngest Alfred we've seen on in movies. That is, mm. he, you know, in Gotham he's quite young as well. Pennyworth. Pennyworth. He's very young. Very young. Yeah. Yeah. But what did you think of him? Uh yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, good. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. We I thought. I think what you said encapsulated everything that I thought. Encapsulated. Don't speaking get it. I don't of, get it. I don't get it. Speaking of, Colin Farrell plays the Penguin. That's right. If you were like, if you showed me him. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'd seen this movie, and you were like, I'm going to give you 50 guesses. Sure, yeah. Who is that? Yeah. I would not have got it. Right? And he doesn't it... quite like, the, the makeup doesn't quite rise to the level of like a Dick Tracy villain, but it's interesting that it everybody else is real, just. real, though, right? It's, it's very really... interesting. Yeah, it does. Like, it's very interesting that they he's the only one who gets a massive, yeah. like, makeover. Yeah. And that's, I would look. I uh, may, maybe you're asking why is that your question? Well, I am asking why, but I, I imagine uh, Matt Reeves has has either explained it at length or will explain it at length at some point in the future. But I think that's fascinating. Yeah, and I wonder if I'm I I is it because he he's seen Colin Farrell in things and he's like he's got a he's got a vibe that would work for yeah. the Penguin and now we get him in that or did Colin Farrell come in and do a great screen test as the Penguin? But they're like you don't look anything like the Penguin. Yeah, and you can't be a cool. Irish dude who's yeah. who's cool and sexy and be the penguin. So also we'll just we'll we'll penguin you up. Yeah. How did that? Did he did he do the audition on with shoes on his knees? Great question. How did he do it? I think it's one of those situations did, where did, did they get just every actor to come in and go wah wah <laughs> wah wah? But I think it could have gone really wrong. Oh yeah. And I hate to like bang this drum, but uh, having seen like Jared Leto in House of Gucci in uh, his sure, like yeah. makeup and the makeup's good. I will like. Guy Pierce in Prometheus, I mean, mm. and they did him because they was did him like because he was supposed to be appear younger in it. Than yeah, that's right. Yeah. Doing. Or you know, it, it could be really annoyingly pointless and distracting. Right. Yeah. But they they nail the makeup and he nails it, yeah. so it it kind of completely works for me. Yeah. You know, and he's getting his own series. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Imagine um, putting that on every goddamn day. Right? <laughs> well, he did uh, hot ones recently. I don't know he if you did, saw it. Yeah. But apparently, it took. It started out taking like three or four hours. They got it down to two eventually because they okay. figured out. But that's yeah. That's a that's a commitment every day. So that's it's usually like two hours to put something on, and then it's like an hour to get rid of it. So yeah, that's a that's a lot of commitment. And then you got to act. Then and then you got to do, do your acting. You got a full day of acting. Um, and I think he said something to the effect of like sometimes putting on the makeup can be kind of alienating like often mm. like it's, and sometimes i guess you wouldn't even know until it's on yeah you'd either be like this is this is kind of weird and alienating and i feel uncomfortable but for some people i think it's a case of i can be this character because there's no i'm not me anymore i'm this yeah. character and i think it's it's also down to the fact that this is a really good it's a it's a mask and it's makeup and it's all like it, it from what from how he described it, it seems like it's all being connected correctly to all his yeah, like the muscle like groups in his face. Anatomically, like so, if he raises yeah. an eyebrow, it comes up correctly. Or yeah. if he, you know, he smirks. It he can he, like he doesn't have to adjust. It's in pieces. Essentially. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's nuts. Mm. It's really good, and also it's a very dark movie, so that helps. That's true. Also, I don't know if you knew this, but one of the things they made use of, and because of the pandemic, it's not quite the volume, but they had these. Huge, like, I don't know if they were LCD screens, but something like that. Oh. So a lot of times when you're in, like, Carmine Falcone's office or, like, they're looking out over a city, whatever, mm. it's not a green screen. It's like a window. It's, like a giant, it's a window. Whoa. It's a real big building. <laughs> wow. But I think, the, I think that added so much to it and probably helped keep down on cost as well. Mm. And, again, when you're filming this, you know, under lockdown, mm. like, little things like that really help. And also – as we've seen in like Star Wars and other pl- other places where they've used the volume, which might also just be Star Wars, you get the light bouncing off everything. You know mm. what I mean? You don't have to take out like green screen reflections because it's all real light. Yeah, filtering. right. And I think that just made a made a huge difference. There are some great shots of Gotham in this. Yeah. in this movie. So. Mm. I recognize the city of Gotham. Yes. Yeah. Same. same. No, but they still didn't do any like big, like a big typewriter or something. I would love that. I don't think this is the kind of world with a big typewriter. I think they could do a big greasy typewriter. Sure, <laughs> just covered in it's chips. Called, yeah, it's called typewriter fish and chips. <laughs> I wanted to actually ask you about like the look of Batman and the the practicality of his suit. Mm-hmm. I think it takes a, a step further again than Nolan. Uh-huh. Where that was very much like, well, this is an army suit and this, we're repurposing yeah, right, the right, Batman right. suit. Where this one, the intention was that he's handmade it and it yeah. feels that way, even uh-huh. though you'd have to be incredibly talented at that. Mm-hmm. And it does look like he's Alfred just, probably did it. Alfred probably did it also. But it does look like he's just adding bits to it as, as he goes. As he yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's also like if he got already, stabbed here, yeah. he'd put a plate on it. He's, it's already dinged up, you know, in places. Mm. 
and he's already got and he's got the eye makeup underneath, yep. which I really appreciate. They didn't shy away from when he takes the mask no. off. He's got the like. Yeah, I think even at the start, you see him applying the eye yeah. makeup, or at some point in the movie, you do. Yeah, exactly. Do you think they meant to put that in? No, I think that's probably a mistake. <laughs> probably a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting in a chair that says Robert Pattinson on the back. <laughs> so. But even like, I, I love like the use of his weapons, like the the grapple gun. And when I say weapons, he just uses that to shoot people mostly, <laughs> doesn't he? Well, it's interesting because it's got it looks. It looks very similar to the classic 89 grappling gun. Yeah. But it's also on like a holdout. So it's yes. in his – It's in his, and he's got two. He's got two, And yeah. they're in his sort of gauntlets, mm. like the in, inside of his gauntlets. I guess which you can't lose them, so that's no, good. Can't drop them. Can't drop them. And also, and this is me just inventing uh, uh, – like we're, we're no prizing this movie. Yeah. But if, if you do that, then it, you, could, you could say there's like a – there's like a infrastructure in the suit, like a length of rope in it. Well, not I mean, oh, even like even like you know, cables. Oh, mechanically, it's yeah, all cables in, and yeah, built into the right. suit. So like, because you couldn't practically put it into like a little gun. And also, yeah. like you know, one of the questions you often think about when, with these kind of characters, if you if you fire a grappling gun and you swing off a building, you're dislocating your arm. Yeah, Is that what's happening. Absolutely. But if it's if it's reinforced it's throughout the entire suit, that's interesting. Then then maybe you don't. Well, you've solved a problem that I had that I didn't know I had with this yeah, movie. Mason. We're gonna we're gonna see some articles about it. No we're doubt. See some clickbaits. I think also like we see the origin maybe of some of his other weapons and or things. And one in particular, there's a moment where he he blows out a fire extinguisher. And then it's like the smoke palette. Oh, yeah, and then right. he's like, I'm anywhere, but where am I now? <laughs> and I think like after that he probably went, that's, a prob- that's probably yeah. a, a pretty good idea and I'm going to do that from now on. Yeah, Zippy's back, The folks. dog's back, hey, everybody. Yo, Zippy, yo, yo. Remember, I didn't put a cone on your head. <laughs> I'm the blameless one. No, that was him, Zippy. No. Don't listen to no, him. I wasn't. There's one other particular aspect of the suit which I, I do want to talk about, but we'll Peeing? Is it, it so he can yeah, pee? Peeing, yeah, I think yeah. he's just peeing anywhere. It's just, you've seen that city? <laughs> sure. Who cares? Oh, he has a knife as well. But, you know, mm. he's got to have a knife. Yeah. you got to have a knife. you got to have a knife in Gotham or Scotland. I agree. Mm. I absolutely agree. I think maybe we'll do some spoilers. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about the action? Did we talk about that? Well, let's talk about it right now. Okay, great. Good. I know some people have said that it's kind of like it's too slow. You know what I mean? There's like a... Because it, it's long shots, like the way that Nolan would often yeah, do. Right, right, but I right. found like the way it was lit yeah. and the way he moves, and just like he'll pick up a gun or a bat and he'll hit someone in the head with it, then he'll yeah. drop it, and he'll hit Arkham the style, Arkham style, exactly. And, and it's also like it, it does feel very real in the sense that like not everything lands perfect, p- picture perfect, yeah. or like sometimes he'll be punching another guy and a guy, the guy behind him will just like take a few shots at him. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel as invincible as. The Ben Affleck version did. Mm. I mean, which he's is, bulletproof. Well, yeah, no, he is bulletproof. But, Ish. Yeah, but you know, and I'm not. These are different versions, and I, I like the Ben Affleck version. Um, I do, but mm. I feel like. Do you think Ben Affleck missed a trick by not having a Ben Affleck? Jeremy Renner <laughs> star. Where well, you could get Ben Affleck updates. Yeah, yeah, he definitely has. Mm. But they're different. You know what I mean? I think mm. if this Batman was probably in a room where there were twenty guys and they all had guns, yeah. He'd probably not get out. He'd probably shoot a fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Whereas Ben Affleck Batman will kill everybody in that room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas this version also doesn't kill anybody. That's true. He goes out of his way. Does to he not even kill accidentally anyone. kill anybody? I don't believe so, but I, I might be wrong. And he hasn't not killed anybody since Batman and Robin, I believe, is the last movie where he hasn't killed anybody. Interesting, right? In live action cinema yeah, well, release. I know people say, what about movies that went to other. No, no, <laughs> stop. Stop and no. And also, look if we if we're gonna we're gonna give a rating and then we're gonna talk about spoilers. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say if I have one criticism, it is three hours long. Yes, and it does the the, the third a lot of hour. people are saying that it's three hours long as well, aren't mm, they? But it's actually two hours and fifty six minutes long. I was about and to pull less, you off on it, and it's less than that if you take the credits out. But also, you probably want to stick around for the credits because there's a two second thing at the end. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. I don't think that's a spoiler. If there's nothing at the no, end, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You don't need to see it. Um, even though I did a video on yeah, it. Yeah. I feel kind of like there was either the, – the reason it's so long mm. is there was some studio interference, especially in the third act, yep. or or that was Matt Reeves' intention all along where we've got to put, we've got to put certain things in Yeah, and I – because it's a certain type of movie. I have a similar complaint. And I think uh, we should talk we about it in spoilers, about. But, I th- but I think – I've 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 seen people say, well, it's three hours long and you couldn't really take anything out. I think you could. I agree. I think you could take some stuff out. Yep. And I wonder if people will do that on their own, mm, uh, or just stop watching at that point. Just stop. Well, I could do that. <laughs> they could do that. It's their power to do so. But you'd look weird in a cinema doing it, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Especially if you hadn't seen it before. Exactly. But now that I have, 
Uh, let's do some spoilers. Okay, I'm going to say best movie ever. I, I agree. Good time. Best movie ever. Again, completely. You say it's the best Batman movie since The Dark Knight, the best solo Batman movie, the other one being The Dark Knight Rises. Yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> it is better than that movie. Uh, look, again, like solid action. I like the, I like the Bruce Wayne. I like the Batman. Yep. Supporting cast is really good. Yep. Soundtrack is good. Mm-hmm. Uh, in t- again, entirely humorless. Well, 99% humorless. Sure. But that's that's the style we're going for. And maybe in the next one he'll lighten up a he'll bit. He'll lighten up just a tad. I wonder, if we'll, get, I wonder if we'll get a Robin in the next one. Well, Rob- I wonder if there'll be another one. Well, I, there will definitely be another one. That's one of the things I talk about in the video I made where Robert Pattinson's like, they if they're going to do Robin. Please, Robin Pattinson. Robin Pattinson. If they're going to do Robin, mm-hmm. they have to make him a kid. Because if yeah. he's just like another guy he hangs out yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you bring in the kid and then you have to justify it. And then mm. it's also because it's fucked up, you know? It is a bit, And yeah. the idea that you then have to go like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Is this for you? Is it for him? Well, on the, on the what, TV show. What are you doing? On Titans, the TV show, they're basically like, yeah, Batman's a bad person. <laughs> like, he's a bad dad. He shouldn't have. He, he shouldn't have done this and he keeps doing it. Yeah. And it's ru- like, the, 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 the premise behind a lot of the episodes is like, Dick Grayson's not Dick Grayson and Jason Todd and etc are not well mentally because no. they were drawn into a war on crime as children. Yeah, so, exactly. To a guy who like gives them validation if they kick somebody really hard in the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, we're doing spoilers. We are doing spoilers right now. This is just a really little thing, but when Alfred was caught in an explosion of sorts. Uh-huh. This was the kind of universe and like where I'm where I thought he could be dead. Could be dead, yeah. You know? And mm-hmm. then uh, afterwards he obviously wasn't, and in hindsight I'm like, obviously they're not going to kill right. him. Right, yeah, yeah. But it did feel like the kind of world where, like, maybe. Maybe we only have, yeah, maybe this is. Yeah. Because, I mean, spoilers for the comic books, Alfred has been dead for quite a long time. Yes. In the comics. He will be back, I'm sure, because yeah. they've killed him before yes. and he came back. As a robot butler. Oh, yeah, maybe. Did yeah. he? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he came back in Batman and Robin as a as an AI but on then TV. He, but yeah. Then he also came back, yeah. As, as a, so they had two yeah, versions. Yeah, of yeah, him. yeah. But I'm wondering because it's it's actually been quite a while. And I in the in the in the I think when I Alfred they'll do that in the Flash. I'll like bring they'll him, bring him back using like archival footage on a computer screen. Oh, maybe it's like an AI. Yeah, Alfred. maybe. Yeah. Anyway, they could. Anyway, yeah, yeah. sorry, go on. I was just going to say, in the like years, in like decades ago, they killed Alfred because I guess they thought they didn't need him anymore. Yeah, and then they brought him back as like a villain who, but he was Alfred, but he lost his memory, and then he ah. came back as a villain, and and then they then they were, oh, and he remembers again, and then he was fine. So I'm wondering if they're going to after do... Batman punched him in the head. Yeah, absolutely. So many times. I'm wondering if they're going to do that in the present day, but just like a more elaborate version of that. Okay. Some, he did he did get his neck broken, so I don't know. That'll get you. Maybe clone him though. That'll get you also. That'll, That'll get, get, get you on. back in the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, should we talk about why the Riddler done it? We should talk about why the Riddler done it. How do you feel about this? This is a spoilery thing, I think. How do you feel about how easily everybody solved all his riddles? Batman just knew all the riddles. Well, he's Batman. He is Batman. That's, <laughs> that's true. Why I, that's why I, I really think there should have been a C for Catwoman. <laughs> one, oh, absolutely. But like, I feel like as an audience member watching it, there is no time as an audience member to puzzle out. They're not giving you the clues to the riddle so you can solve them. No, that's true. It's not true. for you. And I think as <laughs> as a detect, I think this was the best iteration of Batman. Well, that's something we haven't talked a, about as a really, detective. Yeah. yeah, as a detective. Mm. And I guess it, it wasn't really about solving the riddles. It was more about, or well, some of it was. Some was about solving solving those ciphers. Some of it was about riddles. But yeah, some of it right. was about riddles. But it was more about. Why is this person doing this? And then we sort of trace the why back to the man. Yeah. And I think that that, that was good detective work, I thought. But I think it also, like, there were breadcrumbs there which do pay off. So you want the, the opening scene with Ave Maria. Yeah. Somebody is watching a particular, whatever, um, a particular person they're going to kill. It's the Riddler and uh-huh. the person he's going to kill, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at the end, it turns out that the Riddler has just been just perched outside of that nightclub the entire time. Uh-huh. And it's like, well, yeah, he would be, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's really yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's an obvious thing to kind of, you know, mm. to, to do. And I, I like little things like that where he's just kind of camped out at the different mm. places because, yeah, he would need to do that. And also the fact that he's doing – I like the idea that he was doing it – well, he thought he was doing it with Batman. Yeah. That the clues he were le- was leaving him was not to be caught. It was, was to be so like – I'm doing you some great work. Right. You get it right. But, and I one thing that I did very much like is the the fake out where we think that he's figured out that Batman and Bruce Wayne are the same yes. person because he's like Bruce. What? Like they yeah. they finally have that meeting, a la the Dark Knight, in a you know yeah. between a between a pane of bulletproof glass, and he's mm. like Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne. But then he's like, 
you and me, Batman, we got them all except Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And I thought that was, I thought that was very well done. I also thought that it's possible that he knows he's Bruce Wayne at this point. Like, he figured it out and went, oh, this maybe isn't the person that I thought it was. Right. Okay. I don't think it's that. But often, like, you know, villains will discover his identity and just be like, I don't care. Well, he, I you believe, know? unless they've changed the continuity, which they probably have, that he did in Hush he did figure it out, right? Yeah. He knows he knows Bruce Wayne is Batman, but he can't tell anybody because Bruce Wayne will get him. And it's also a riddle. Like, what's the point of a riddle if everybody knows That's the, true, yeah. the answer? But I also, for Catwoman. I also think it could be possible that, yeah, like, which is what it more likely is, is that he's, he's not all-knowing. Yes, and so he cannot make the connection between why would this man who he thinks is helping mm. him be the same person who's one of his enemies? Yeah, right. He cannot, right. Yeah, he cannot th- put those two I together, think that's and that's probably case, it. Yeah. I would say, and I also like the introduction. I guess this is more of a modern day thing where he's built a fan community online. Right. Yeah. Small but dangerous enough where twenty guys will dress up as him and try and shoot the mayor. Yes. And I think I didn't expect something like that. Something that I guess has been a. We, you see it in like terror attacks and white supremacy groups and all and even I guess good communities sure. people build like a loyal following mm. and I just didn't expect them to do that planet broadcasting great Perfect. mates group Thank you. facebook group yes, yes. please uh, I like that in theory but I think in execution mm. why my biggest issue with this movie and the and the length of this movie is that I feel like the initial one of the initial ideas for this movie I feel must have been they catch the riddler and that is the end of the movie. Yeah. But then somewhere along the line, somebody said, whether it was whether it was studio executives or Matt Reeves or or somebody or test audiences, they said, okay, but we can't just have somebody – we can't have an action superhero movie where we catch the bad guy and they go to the asylum and that's the end of the movie. Yeah. Even though that's how a lot of Batman comics go. Yes. We have to have him punch 20 guys. Yeah. And so they went – well, we've got a bunch of extra Riddler costumes. Like we got, we got, we got half a dozen Riddler costume doubles. Mm. So let's just have them show up. And th- and there were elements that that were never introduced in. It felt like it felt like the last part of the last act wasn't very int- integrated into the rest of the movie. Okay. In the sense that they're like, well, we've got you, Riddler, and he's like, yeah, but I put bombs on the seawall. What seawall? <laughs> when did when did that happen? Like if yeah. we if and I and I guess. Maybe maybe there's an establishing shot that I missed, but I'm not an architect, and I wouldn't yeah. have looked at that and gone, "Well, Gotham City's going to go underwater if those seawalls ever certainly blow up." There's certainly a seawall. There's certainly a seawall there. It's it's also a plot point of Year Zero, the comic. Ah. The Riddler does a similar thing where he right. floods the city. Okay, that's not to say that they didn't include this like later on, because right. the elements that connect to it, as in where like Batman, I think it's Batman, finds his computer. And uh-huh. then he sees all the people following and they're like, what kind of guns are we getting? What are we up to? Yeah, right, right, right. Like you could easily put like those two things That's true. in later and on. And I mean maybe maybe this was always the plan and but I feel like that's it, it feels ultimately because they went, Well, we have to we have to have a big fight at the end because yeah. otherwise people will be like, What a rip off. We needed a big spectacle. Uh, because it does kind of become a yeah, a a different kind of Batman movie in that point, I would yeah. say. Not so different, but yeah, yeah. it definitely like ramps up. And also another another issue I had with that is also like the guys he fights at the end are just randos. They are people on the internet who they're, they're his followers. Yeah. But also like who who are they to Batman? They're they're even like the idea that I think they're, they're just an extension. Yeah, of the I know. Riddler, but the, the, the idea, idea also right? that they wear exactly the same thing down to the glasses. Yeah. Really felt to me like they were like we got costumes lying around. Like if they reveal like if and I think at one point one of them the mask comes off and they're like I'm I'm just a I'm just a nobody or something, or I'm whatever it is, and it's just like it would to me. It would make more sense if we'd seen any of those people well, before. Prior- I thought, and I don't know whether this is true, mm-hmm. that that guy might have been the guy he spoke to at the funeral. Uh, you know, the guy maybe. in the crowd is like these rich people and whatever. whatever. Oh, maybe. I don't know if it's the same guy because his head was all taped up. Yeah, like, right, right. So I don't know whether that's actually true. Mm. But but I think also that then led into what I what I liked about the finale where he's helping people. And whereas at the start, when he saves that person, the person's just like, please don't beat me up. And yeah, he's yeah. like, why, why would I beat you up? And at the end he's like, I'm going to rescue you and not beat you up. And not beat you up. And, and they're like, why would you bring up the beating <laughs> yeah. up part? But then he gets the idea of like, it's not enough for him to be terrifying. Mm. He needs to also be seen to the people who are good yeah. as, a, as a force for good. Mm. And that doesn't necessarily mean he has to beat up 20 guys, I no. guess. 
But I think I, I like that story arc mm. of the character where they're like, I can be nice. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> As a necessity, if it makes me do my job better, I guess. Yeah. But the I'm just bit- going to tape a big smile under <laughs> the front of my cowl. <laughs> but the bit that I felt was tacked on, Go on. was the Joker. Yeah. I really. Now that's Barry. Is it Cohen? How are we yeah, pronouncing Ke- that? Barry Cohen? Keegan? I'm not sure. We get it wrong every time. I'm having looked at it and yeah. being mocked for saying Barry Cohen in the yeah. past. I think it might be Barry Cohen. Done. There you go. With a K. Uh, he's Druig. Folks, it's, it's Druig. Druig. Yeah, it's Druig is here, everybody. And he apparently there is a deleted scene. Yes. Which they deleted. Oh. Fun fact. Where it was earlier in the movie and he goes to Arkham to talk to like a proto Joker. Okay. So he's not quite fully jokerized. He hasn't been jokerized, yet. okay. But he has a, he's had a heart defect since birth, which causes him to smile all the time. And that has led people to react to him a certain way. And he's really good at reading people, but he's not quite the joke yet. And apparently he's based very much off the man who laughs. Ah, the original. Which, which is what the original Joker was, was based off. And the idea, I think, of putting in that scene, yeah. which is, I guess, similar to what they did in the Long Halloween where he visits Calendar Man. You visit somebody who's similar yes. and go, what's going on? Right, yeah, I think yeah. that that speaks to a wider universe and what might come in a sequel and feels less forced than the two villains get together and go, ha-ha, we're friends! <laughs> yeah, right. I see what you're saying, but also I, I, would, I would imagine if you put the Joker... It's Chekhov's The Joker. Yeah. If you put the Joker in at the start of the movie or at the midpoint, you I think, think everybody would expect yeah. that he would pop up at the end and be like, oh, you thought you'd gotten the Riddler, but also I'm here. And I've got a big gun with a boxing glove on the end. You're probably right. But also, just don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> just don't put it in. <laughs> yeah. And be like, he might be in the next one. We don't mm. know. Yeah. And yeah. that's not to say of anything about his performance because I don't yeah. really have a problem with any of that. And we didn't really see him. So yeah, I don't right. know what exactly they were going yeah. for. Um, yeah. Look, and again, if I if I had one more, if I would, if I'm going to harp on a little bit more about the Riddler, mm-hmm. I think it, it would for me it would I would be much I wouldn't be much happy with the Riddler clones if they were like maybe low level thugs that Batman had beaten up or earlier. Some and, were cops, maybe. Some were cops, like would, him. yeah, for yeah. sure. Like anybody, you know. And maybe they were. We don't know. Well, yeah. that's true. We don't know. They were just randos. Yeah. Mm. No, that's. I think that's a. Solid point. But I did like the bit where he burst through the ceiling and then started beating him up until he got overwhelmed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know? that's because, true, yeah. again, that's probably what would happen, mm. you know? And if I if I had one more criticism... You've got, you seem like you said you've got a lot of one more criticisms, Mason. Right? <laughs> well, this is my segment, one more criticism, until I've forgotten what I was talking about. Okay, great. Uh, he is pretty bulletproof. Yes, he is. I mean, and, and again, with the fight at the end, it seemed like maybe the constant being shot was slowing him down a bit. Until but again, there's there's what the problem is that there's. Do you like how he had adrenaline or something though? Oh, that's a good. Or was it venom? Do you think so? Maybe. I don't think in this universe. Maybe like a. Uh, it was very weird looking. It was weird looking. You're right. right. Maybe it was just a glow stick. For people who don't. For people who. Uh, was it the, from the movie Venom? Yes. Yes, it was from the that's movie Venom. That's what you're Venom. thinking. Yeah. Or it was Edward Cullen's Venom. Oh my goodness. From Twilight. I remember the Twilight yeah. movies. We talked. I about think it them. might. So in the for people. Because there's different continuities and all sorts of different versions of Bane. Yeah. But in the the original comic books, he Bane is a is is gains superhuman strength from from Venom. Mm. But prior to the introduction of Bane, there was a storyline called Venom where Bruce Wayne takes a lot of Venom, mm. and he's like, That's a I'm, good a, point. "I'm a I'm gonna be a better crime fighter with all this Venom." Yeah. And uh, and he's not though. And I reckon it makes my back stronger. Yeah, and that's, that's how right. it's going to stay. That's I right. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. I so didn't maybe, think maybe it is. All. Yeah, there you go. Um, a couple of things that I, I guess I wanted to point uh, to touch on, which I quite liked. Uh, Falcone being uh, Selena Kyle's father. Mm-hmm. That's sort of the long Halloween yeah, 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 universe, yeah. and some other universes probably where it may or may not be the case. And uh, I liked the bit how he sort of can fly, but not really. Boy, yeah. you only want to use that if you have to. That's true. Because <laughs> it's a disaster. That's interesting. Yeah, he had a ins- – rather than have – rather than have a, you know, the, the electrically primed glider suit that he had in Dark – And this the Dark is what I trilogy. mean about being like a step even more – Real world. Yeah, than, yeah. Uh, so man, instead of the that, the next version is going to be yeah. so real world. That's right. <laughs> instead of that or, or anything else like that, he has a sort of a. He can sort of. He's got some zips on his cape, I guess, yeah. that can turn his suit into like the classic squirrel suit. The, yeah. The what do you call those? I think it's like a suit. like a special forces like paragliding situation. Yeah. Where you, you, you put your arms out like a big squirrel. They're in some of the of Michael glides. Bay movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 
And yeah, you sort of glide, <laughs> sort of. He would have gotten away with that too if he hadn't hit that bridge. I agree. Yeah, I mean, he did get away with it. Yeah, but yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have aimed for the moving truck. I would have aimed for the bridge. That's interesting. Mm. That's probably why the top you're... of the bridge, not the bottom of the bridge. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that makes. But sense. But I guess he was like, if I hit this truck, I can get it. It's a quick exit. He was also going like a hundred miles an hour, so he probably didn't have <laughs> a lot true. of time. Yeah, true. Also, install the parachute, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's a better idea. <laughs> also, there was that one moment where it's it's like the shot of. Batman's face, and it did look uh, a little bit ridiculous. The uh, Digby Chicken Caesar, 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 Caesar syndrome, yeah, exactly. We yeah. do love a bit of that yeah. up here, don't we, Mason? Could have cut that, I think. Yeah, fair enough. Look, I've got some feedback here. Go on. Just on our podcast, what oh. they think of us. No, this is people, they've, they've written about the Batman. Okay. Uh, Craig says, the Batman might be the first Batman movie about Batman. Not the villains, not Gotham, not even Bruce Wayne. The focus often literally is completely on Batman. Oh. I really loved that. I think that's a great point. Uh, Scott Milton Art says... Finally, a Batman that embraces the silliness instead of running from it. It was dark, but he was still a hero. Felt like the comics and cartoons come to life. Best movie ever. Best Batman ever. Ooh. Average Daudless says, loved the Batman, but be honest, guys, if it was a Die Hard sequel, how would you rate it? I mean, better than most of the Die Hard sequels. Yeah, I'd say probably uh, right, up, right up there with probably <laughs> the first couple. Better yeah. than Die Hard 2, at least, as well. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I don't, yeah, know, yeah, I don't yeah. think that's a great Die Hard movie. Mm. Josh says, watching the Batman felt like reading a high-quality graphic novel like The Long Halloween. It had the perfect mix of gripping mystery, disturbing twists, and bleakness with just a sprinkle of hope at the end. Robat Bat and Bat is batting 1,000. And Mike D says, just got out of the Batman. From the Beastie Boys? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, it's Mikey Dawson, but yeah, just got out of the Batman. My favorite part That's was- not Mike D from the Beastie Boys. We don't know that. Was on the internet, you can be anybody. That's true. It's like the movie Reddit Player One, you can be anybody. That's very true. Uh, the other part was when my girlfriend at Merida Lorraine turned to me and pointed out that the Batmobile was a, was better, was way better than a sensible Volvo. Yeah, that's true. Which is what, of course, Edward Cullen drives. Yes. Those wonderful Twilight movies. Mm. Cool. Okay, how about this, though? Go on. Why don't we talk about the sequel and what we might be getting? Yeah, okay. Um, the City is... Joker? Again, I guess. Again, I've, I've got a video on it. Uh-huh. It's a more hopeful version of Batman. Man, maybe. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the, the city might still be flooded or might not. Yeah. Could do the Joker, might do Hush. There's some kind of like yeah. Thomas Elliot, and the, we see we literally see the word Hush, and there's a few characters where you're like, is that Thomas Elliot? Maybe. I I think I saw somebody on the internet be like, maybe this the, the maybe the the villain in this should have been Hush. Well, yeah, they're not dissimilar in terms of motivations, but and also. Uh, do you want that as your? I don't think you want that as your first villain in this in yeah, this universe. I, I guess think. that makes yeah. sense. And a lot of people are in saying, including me, that you know, is the Court of Owls among this somewhere? Oh. And oh, know- for people who don't know, Hush is uh, is a ch- was, was a childhood friend of Batman. Yep, uh, or Bruce Wayne rather, uh, who eventually uh, surgically alters his face to look like Bruce Wayne because he's crazy. He's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I know the cast as well. I've talked about Court of Owls and how they love that narrative, mm. and there's definitely room to do something with that because you can just be like. They were here all along. Right, we, right, were, right. we did the Riddler. That's why Gotham sucks and is so greasy. Have, we put the grease on everything. I have, a, I have an owl mask. Think about an owl. What, what's the most? What's what's the thing about an owl? They're greasy, aren't they? Excuse what? me. What? No, they're greasy. Yes. I don't, I think, you ever you ever you ever petted an owl and you're like, oh, this is greasy. I think your hands are greasy. I don't think it's no, the owl. no, it's the owls. I've based my whole the whole this whole thing's based on greasy owls. So if owls aren't greasy, then uh... why are you called court of owls and not the greasy owls? Oh, then? I've got to rethink a few things. <laughs> oh, I'll give you this. You're very greasy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I am. <laughs> Anyways, if you have any opinions, we've got a great team that greases up all the suits. <laughs> If you do have any uh, opinions, we'd love to hear about anything yeah. in the sequel. But yeah, I'm sure we'll be talking about this movie. And I would love to. Um, yeah, I would look. Forever. I would. I would love to see a, a, a Mr. Freeze in this. Oh yeah, he's also just, talked about that as well. Yeah, just give us. I don't. I don't care how you do it. Yeah, give us a weird. What freeze. if they didn't do it? Would you care about that then? Yeah, I'd be mad. Oh, no. Uh, All right, cool. What's an out of the box villain? Give us a Clayface. Egghead. Clayface. Clayface is, Clayface is. Have they done a live action Clayface? They, they, no, not not in movies. But obviously. you wouldn't have to do. Like a giant. You do actor Clayface? No, I think. Well, maybe, but I think you. Oh, are you saying because we can't have any superpowers? Well, things? they're saying that that's probably not what they're going to do. I, I reckon they, they could do. I reckon it wouldn't. You could. I think you could do actor Clayface, but I think you could also do. You could do weird malleable face guy. I okay. think. I don't think that would be. Yeah, yeah. Too far. Like he doesn't turn to clay or whatever, but he he can just 
force his face into different configurations. Because he's and so then, greasy. Because he's so greasy and then he uses makeup and, and, and a wig or whatever. Okay. He's, he's more a chameleon kind of character. Oh. That's a different character though, obviously. That is true. Uh, but just give, just, give me, just give me Mr. Freeze. I would love to just see him. Just weird, Freeze. weird hunched over Mr. Freeze and he's got his big helmet on. Because we've never Freeze seen gun. Mr. Freeze in a live action movie. That's have true. We? That's true. I wish we had. But we haven't. I wish I could look to something and go, there it is. No, you can't though. Even if they did it badly, there it is. Mm. We can't. That's true. Anyways. All right, is that the show? That's the whole show. Folks, thank Lovely. you so much for listening to the show. Yeah. If you've got any opinions on the Batman, let us know. I More do, opinions. Actually. I already do. If you think if especially if you think we are very wrong. I would love to well, say. Well, I think and I mentioned this last week of like the two people I spoke to afterwards. One mm. of them was like, I didn't like it. I thought right. it was the dark night light. Oh. And I did. I didn't feel that way, but I also think we, 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 we. I've seen a little bit of that, and I think we'll probably see more of it. Mm. And it's not like as big and bombastic as a lot of Batman movies. It's That's quite true. slow, you know, mm. for a lot of it, which yeah, yeah. is also fine not to like. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if, like, cinematically, if they did another one which is very similar to this, like another detective movie. Yeah, yeah. Do you think people would be like, boy? Or, do you think we'll be like, boy? We're sick of this. Yeah. Can he just punch twenty guys in identical costumes? Please, if we could, just now, please do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, let us know. It would be uh, very. Let uh, us know. I would love to hear some new perspectives on this. La, 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 la. Me too. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Oh, Snake. We'll do Snake Eyes. We'll do Snake Eyes. Yeah. If you haven't watched it, watch it. If movies, you watched the it, movie watch Snake Eyes. It. It's on your streaming service or you buy it. Spend real money on it. That's right. Spend real money on the movie Snake Eyes. <laughs> No red, amount is too much money. Rent out to your local. What is it? What is it Fourteen ninety nine. Well, yeah, just buy it. Cinemaplex. Rent yeah. one out. Oh, yeah. And sure. you'll make it back in ticket sales. I think that's true, yeah. People will come. Mm-hmm. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.